Yeah, what's going on? The other one was pretty quick. Well, I'm sorry, the uh, live was pretty long. Be cutting that up into some prime cuts. Of course, the first one to come is going to be my uh, prediction with the Super Bowl. So I didn't only predict it, but I told you why it was going to happen. And as I was watching it, I kept saying to myself, the bullshit is going to happen pretty soon. In the first half, well, in the first quarter, and most of the first half, what you saw was the Eagles doing what they've been doing the whole season. Then, I think that's when Jalen Hurts dropped fumble when the Eagles are really about to pull away and go up by two touchdowns. Then the Chiefs got it, returned it for a touchdown. Then in the second half, all of a sudden, as predicted, the Chiefs don't, I mean, the Eagles didn't know how to play uh, football anymore. And you know it was fixed because the Chiefs had two wide open touchdowns. Why would all the Eagles players be on one side of the end zone and leave a man wide open two times? See, that's the bullshit I look for. And that's what we got. Because I told you they were hyping up Patrick Mahomes after he won against Cincinnati and Cincinnati got got the uh, the fucking shaft with that shit. And I think that player that shoved uh, Mahomes out was probably paid to do it any goddamn way, playing a role, because he had more than enough time not to shove him uh, after he got out of bounds. Because he didn't have momentum carrying him like that. He had, he had enough leeway to stop or to avoid Patrick Mahomes. But that's the WWE part of the shit. Like I said, Jalen Hurts, he's new to the game, about to get a contract. So, you know, they're not ready to give him a Super Bowl like that. Could have been the case if, if it hadn't been Patrick Mahomes. Other people say, well, why would, you, why would they let uh, a small market team like Kansas City win? And I answered that because... LeBron James was on the Cleveland Cavaliers. That's a small market team. That was an under-the-radar team. People forgot they even had a team until LeBron James came. If you got a superstar, it works. Or if a man they need to promote as a superstar, it works. It just so happens with the Patriots, like like I said, the 9-11 situation. Ray Lewis, Peyton Manning going out with Super Bowls. Come on. Come on. You know, you know the bullshit is there. That's why every time I watch a Super Bowl, I'm looking for when a team does something stupid. Not stupid as in, damn, he fucked up, missed his assignment or something like that. But stupid as in, even during a regular season, they would never do some shit like that. That's what you look for. That's when the bullshit starts happening. That's why when that Atlanta... New England game, I said, damn, the comeback, everything had to be precise if that shit was fucking scripted. Now, the only thing in that game I can see a script taking place was on the Atlanta side when they didn't run the damn ball and they passed it. But on the other hand, I can understand why they passed it because they said that was the way they got there. They, they, they've been rocking the house, passing the ball, which they have been. But you really, you know, obviously it's a Super Bowl. You run it. You, you play to win the game. You play it smartly. So that's the only bullshit I, I spotted in that New England Atlanta. But there are a bunch of Super Bowls you can go to. I might do another uh, sports conspiracy. because That's the one video I, I uh, lost. Because, God damn. This shit is so fucking fixed, it's making me goddamn sick. And I tell people how it's going to be. I don't do it to brag. I don't do it, uh, you know, none of that kind of stuff. I do it because I'm telling you, I'm spotting the fact that the shit is fucking bullshit. That's why. That's why I just knew it, just like Carolina. See, we saw that. That's why I mentioned Carolina before. Because we, we already seen that same scenario take place where the 
Carolina Panthers were dominating the scene the entire season. <clears throat> no matter who came, they almost had a perfect season. Rolled all the way to the Super Bowl. And then once they get once they get to the Super Bowl, all of a sudden they don't know what to do. You can't tell me a team is fucking destroying every team before them. Then when they get to the Super Bowl, now they don't know what to do. And that's what the Eagles were doing. And I knew the excuses they were going to come up with. Oh, well, you know, they weren't battle tested and all that kind of shit. It's bullshit. You saw how the Eagles were dominating them. Because Kansas City is a, a soft team. Truth be told, they're good, but they're soft. And the Eagles, man, eh, come on. I, I, I mean, this, this shit is getting fucking frustrating. And of course, that sports betting and just propaganda in general has a lot to do with this because like I said, you know, it's the most watched sport. That's why you always see them, the military sponsoring them and then they wear military fatigue uh, outfits to get you to sign up. Propaganda. Can't stand it. Hopefully the XFL, USFL, I wish they would change that USFL logo to something more modern, but Hopefully they provide real football because right now, man, shit, this shit, <laughs> it's fucking disappointing. But they said it was, it might be the third highest rated Super Bowl, but but for people who don't study these kind of things like markets, cities, they they think well, Kansas City is a small uh, market. Why would they want them to win? For the same reason, like I said, they, they wanted Cincinnati to lose against Los Angeles because they're trying to reestablish the Los Angeles market. And the owner spent a whole lot of money. You know those Rams shouldn't have won. They shouldn't even gotten to the Super Bowl. But they had to do it for the NFL. See, that's why people say the first Super Bowl between the Colts and the Jets was fake. And staged in order to allow the merger to happen. Because if, if the Jets hadn't won, they said that the uh, merger wouldn't have taken place. Then you wouldn't have teams like the Jets, Buffalo Bills, Patriots. I think Kansas City. Yeah, Kansas City. A lot of those teams. They wouldn't be in the NFL right now. In a lot of those town, cities and towns and states, they wouldn't have NFL teams. But they needed it to happen because they didn't want the competition. Same thing like the NBA and the uh, ABA merger. The NBA didn't want the competition. So you put them together. Team owners. They get paid. They get a valuable franchise. And that's why a lot of these others keep starting uh, football leagues because they want an NFL franchise, but they can't get in either because they're not expansion is not happening or they don't want certain owners in, but you know, it is what it is. Another fixed Super Bowl, easy to predict. See the people who chose the Eagle. That's why I said in, in the video, everybody expects for the Eagles to win. That's why they're not going to win. Because that's why they could easily change it around. Because the Eagles should have rolled over the Chiefs. Which they were doing. But the script takes place. It's fucked up. But like I said. Everybody win or lose or draw. Everybody's getting paid. A whole lot of money. To shut up. You don't mind being the loser. As long as your bank account is the winner. And like I said. You see Jalen Hurts is still getting credit. He outplayed Patrick Mahomes. That's what they're saying. So his rep is not damaged in the loss. And we'll see what happens when he gets that contract. And then before I close and get to the main topic, it's like Malcolm Butler, when he rehearsed, did that thing with the Patriots, got that pass. He became the starter for the Patriots. And then after a while, they let him go. Then Tennessee signed him. Then he got paid from uh, Tennessee. So they get a reward. One way or the other. 
Malcolm Butler is forever in Super Bowl history because of that. But see, I'll never forget that because he said they rehearsed that play over and over again. And again, when he said that, I said to myself, how can you rehearse something that you don't know is going to happen? And you could tell when he did it, it was clearly rehearsed. Because when I saw it live, I'm like, I didn't know what happened. Even the announcers didn't know that it was an interception. I assume, up oh, Tom Brady lost another one. That's what I assume. So it is what it is, man. It's fucked up, but it is what it is. Okay, let's get to this main topic. Blacks and media. Ah, tired of black people who get these comfy media jobs. There are two, well, there's one main Negro I want to point out. One is, that his name is Bart Scott. He used to play on the Jets and the uh, Ravens. Yes, that was water. For those who don't like it, we, you need water to live. You saw the football, people get Gatorade. You gonna tell them they don't they shouldn't have Gatorade? Come on. <laughs> so Bart Scott is one of the coon Negroes who I can't stand listening to. Like I told you, I called out that 987 kiss. I'm sorry, 987 ESPN. And um again, every time I listen to him. It's black this. Black people do this. Oh, we do this. We do that. I even sent a tweet to Bart Scott. I told the man, why don't you stop cooning? Have you noticed you're the only Negro on the uh, radio talking like this? I sent one to uh, my man, too, on ESPN. Swagoo. Now, I noticed with him, if... He heeded the tweet, which it seems like it, because after I gave him the tweet, my man, Marcus Spears, my man was calm. You know, he was still entertaining, still excitable, but he's not acting as black and reckless and unprofessional anymore. Because if you notice all these black people in media, you know what they're doing, especially sports media in particular. They act unprofessional. See, if you get fired from your job, that is, if your contract doesn't get renewed or they cancel the show, and they don't feel like dealing with you again, they'll look at your body at work, and they might say, oh, you're not fit for CNN or MSNBC because you're unprofessional. Your diction is not right. You talk street talk. I keep trying to tell these people. Same thing with uh Smith, but they pay him well, so he'll 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 coon out and try to be black. The point is they hire these people to be black and not to be reporters or give their analysis. They can't just be they got to be wild. They got to joke. They got to have bad diction. They got to keep referencing race all the time. But nobody else has to do that. You look at ESPN. They got so-called Hispanics. You got that Mina lady. I think she's half Korean, half white. Homos uh, up there. Everybody, all different types. You got uh, the Indian guy. Notice they don't have to be Asian, Indian, they try not to be that so they can fit in. I don't want to hear sports uh, from a Mexican or a Korean. You can call that what you want to call it, but God damn it, they don't play the goddamn game and most of them are not fans of the damn games. So I don't want to hear their goddamn analysis, to be honest with you. They shouldn't even be on TV. And every other one is paired with the small hat because they run the show. Just like this Bart Scott. This guy is such a fucking coon. 
in a dimwit. He doesn't realize I'm the only one acting a fucking fool. I am on a radio show. Well, it was national at one time. Now it's local again. They might put it national again because these other guys on the national one are boring. But Bart Scott doesn't take time to think to himself. You know, he says he's Jamaican, so that's why he's making black people look bad. Because every time he says something out of his mouth, oh, black people do this. You got to understand how we think. You don't speak for us. I don't want you to speak for me. White people are impressionable. They think if a Negro like you says this is how black people are, they'll, they'll take your word for it. You got to stop that. You don't stop to think, how come the white people aren't cooning out? How come they're not trying to be uh, buffoons? They're trying their best to try to sound street or black because that's what's cool. But black people in media, you got to realize you got to tone that shit down. Why you could hear Bart and his co host, he always talks too much, says too much, and acts like he's on the corner. And his co host tries his best to try to fit in, like, yeah, man, I see what's happening, all that kind of stuff, and talk about the music and movies. Bart Scott, that's why they hired him because he's a fucking idiot. How are you going to talk about movies that black people watch to a white guy? We don't watch the same shit. We didn't grow up in the same environment. Music wise. Now white people try to act like they know they've been listening to the same music we've been listening to. Our music that is. But they're lying. They just want to fit in and act like they are with us. And then when we mention, and you know damn well when it comes to R&B, you know damn well. That's that's the total litmus test right there. You know damn well. Uh, they didn't uh, listen to the same shit we listened to. At best, they can talk about some 90s shit that was played on MTV. But not no uh, Freddie Jackson and, and shit like that. And some, you know, straight up R&B groups. But, um, but that's the game they play. And Bart, unfortunately, is not smart enough to understand these things. Stephen A thinks he's smart and smarter than his bosses. So he'll coon out as his ego allows. And he'll play the black American role. Only when outed did he say he was Caribbean. But he's not acting like a Caribbean. He's acting like a black American. Because he doesn't have to. At the end of the day. His people are not suffering from the way he acts. He always t says that he's a black American. But he's a liar. Bart Scott said he was a Jamaican. And he's acting like a coon. Before you know who started talking about all this shit. You know who was constantly telling you about these people. <laughs> and it's from my experience. That, that's how I was telling you about it. Now you got other black guys on, on the uh, new uh, ESPN or Fox. They try to act a little calmer. But sometimes their diction is still not good. And that makes us still look bad. You know? So I think these guys got to stop being black. If the producer comes to them and tells them, like I, I, I think I did a video about similar to this before. And <clears throat> they say... It's a new day and age. Maybe we got to appeal to a younger demographic who's more hip hoppity. <clears throat> and if you speak correct English, your diction is well is good. Then, and they don't like that. Ask them how come the white guys 
Don't have to speak bad English now. Huh? So these guys are paid to be black. In other words, they're paid to coon. Because being black means being reckless, being unprofessional. Again, I had a job in radio one time. And I liked it. I was thinking to myself, damn, I should go far. Even though I didn't think my voice was right. I didn't make the air, though. Except for one time, introduction. But the guy I brought in, all he was doing was going around telling jokes, acting unprofessional. And he turns out he was Jamaican. Of Jamaican heritage, that guy I was telling you about with the one Jamaican ancestor, but he claimed that because it's, I guess, it's more prestigious than being a fucking black American slave. Because you got a nationality, external uh, nationality you can point to. But we got cut from that job, mainly because of him. They didn't say that, but I knew that's what it was. And you had the black uh, woman up there, and she was a uh, professional. And, you know, that was her career. So, you know how it is. They don't want nobody, you know, making them look bad. But unfortunately, that's how shit happens. But these black on-air media personalities, they got to stop being black. Because if you're hired just to be black, that's not good. Now, now I know the money is good. So, it's hard to resist. Especially if you were someone who, whether or not you played sports or not, pro sports or not, you got your house, you know, you had a car, high level car, you don't want to lose that shit, you like, fuck it. You want me to coon? Fuck it, I'll coon. Like you got that African Acho who keeps talking about his NFL uh, experience. And I know every time he says, yeah, when I was in the NFL, you could see everybody else's face. They're constantly looking like, motherfucker, you know you weren't you were only in the NFL for like two and a half years. Shit, that's like not even being in the NFL. So, but it's he tries to make it a big deal to him. Oh, yeah, I know uh, Shady McCoy and all these kind of people. These were my people. Motherfucker, they ain't know you like that. But he's over the top. And his job is to outdo black Americans. Act black when needed. Act like any other immigrant when needed, which is acting white. And anybody who says what's acting white, you know what the fuck that is. Because <laughs> I'm talking about acting black right now. So you know what the fuck acting white is. <laughs> uh, this is what, and I also watched the show uh, today. Apparently it was old. It was about the Will Smith uh, uh, football player murder. I noticed they had a Negro writer. For some odd reason, he injected race into it. And this bitch was all the way away from her car. I hate when white people do this shit, man. She was all the way from her car. And then she, uh, oh, yeah, let me hit that shit one more time. Make sure I got that shit. How can you hit that shit as you were walking away from your motherfucking car? Damn. Can't stand that shit. My shit is better than your shit, but for some for some odd reason, you think I'm going to your shit. I mean, damn. Anyway. It's about that Will Smith uh, football murder. They had um, the black guy introduce race into it. He called the killer a black man who killed a man, which is Will Smith. Matter of fact, I got to look up and see what happened if there was any appeals on that shit. Apparently, they had a stand your ground law in Louisiana, of all places. They say you could actually motherfucking execute a motherfucker. If you feel that they're a threat to you. I said, damn, that ain't cool. Shouldn't be able to execute somebody unless they got a weapon. Shit. I mean, you talk about people making shit up to kill people. God damn. So I don't know why that guy brought race into the shit because it was nothing but black people in the motherfucker. But I'm getting tired of this shit across all media. It's always got to be this black shit. They have black barbershops and that's another thing with LeBron James and all these other people. They bring up this black barbershops in the media as a place for discussion. That's some shit that's supposed to be some things you just got to keep to yourself. 
You just can't put it everywhere. And black people got a habit of doing that shit. Look what we do. Look what we do. If you didn't tell anybody, nobody else would know what the fuck goes on in black barbershops. Now, I know some people say, oh, it's been going on for years. Yeah, it has been. But lately, they've been really making it sociable to other people. Then you got the hood talk that people come up with on the radio. Which I'm getting tired of that shit. And the race talk. And then you got what blacks do talk like Bart says all the time. Uh, so you can talk about blacks all day. Negative, positive, what have you. And to back what I'm saying up as fact that they're told to do this. Always be on the lookout for who they can't talk about or won't talk about because they're afraid of saying the wrong thing. Jews and gays. You saw that NBA player who said no homo. Then the reporters like, oh, the, the league, well, the front offices might want to hear about that. If he once he said that shit, I would have said, man, I'm out of here. Fuck, you got to bring that shit up. League offices like they should investigate. Fucking snitch. I mean, stitching right in my face. You want me to continue? That's why some of these guys too fucking young. They don't understand when they're being played. These parents, these black parents, man, they got to fucking educate their kids better, man. I had to deal with life and deal with these white people. That's why black people got to learn to shut their fucking mouths. You got to learn when to talk and when not to talk. The best way to learn when not to talk or when not to say too much is don't say too much. When you say too much, too much to slip out. Damn sure I don't say too much with white people. Now, I know everybody don't have the same experiences that I had, but it took me some time before I realized that they're always probing. Trying to find out if stereotypes are true. I'm just trying to find out how much you're willing to tell. Then when you don't talk too much, they're like, man, why not? Maybe he's mean. No. The fuck I got to tell you anything for? I don't know you. <laughs> Black people got to be like that. Like I tell you, East Indians, even Asians, they always play. They can get away with playing the I don't speak English role. And people don't press them. But they know that black people are always talking out loud in public. Online. YouTube videos. Tell too damn much. And they know they, they study you. Then they, after a while they figure out how to trigger you into snitching. And too many black people fall for it. Hood style blacks in particular. You just got to learn to shut the fuck up. Don't volunteer too much information. It's just that simple. But some people like to be the center of attention. And you want to keep on talking. If you're on in media, just stick to the main topic. And don't go any further. See, when I speak on YouTube, I know other people are listening. A lot of these black people, when they speak on YouTube, they act like, oh, well, I'm directing towards black people, so nobody else is listening. They're listening. That's why I don't call black people niggers when I'm on here. Because that doesn't look good. That doesn't sound good. When other people are listening. Why would you want to call black people niggers? I'm on the fucking video game. I play the... Uh, GTA 5 online. Some guy every now and then comes on on the PC, by the way. And the PC, it can be live, but fucking moderators be fucking shit up. This one guy comes on, hey niggas, I can tell you he's from the Bronx or somewhere, niggas. 
hey niggas, who's there, niggas? And all that kind of shit. I could tell, I knew that was a Puerto Rican. Then after a while, I heard him speak in Spanish. But one time I said, damn, man, why all the niggas? He's the only one talking. He mainly, he's the only one talking. Most people ain't talking. But I knew when I heard too many niggas in the street style, I knew we had to be a Hispanic and not a, a, a white man. Because a white man is going to say, nigger. I mean, pisses me off. But once I get his name, I'll report him. Then they'll kick their asses out of there. Um, I mean, just play the motherfucking game. We don't need to hear your loud ass mouth. But like I said, you don't hear them talking nothing about small hats and uh, homosexuals. And before I close out, because I'm not going to make this one an hour. Like you just heard about the white lady and her car alarm. Not to think white people do that kind of piss me off, that fake ass white smile. I mean, where do they? I talked about this years ago, man. I swear, did they go get trained on this shit? When they see somebody black come with a bullshit smile? White girl did that to me. Bullshit smile. I didn't smile back. Because uh, I was getting out of the elevator. She was already out ahead of me going to her car. She heard footsteps behind her. She saw me, then she started moving a little faster getting to her car. Then she gets in with the fake ass smile. I didn't smile because at that point in time, I'm like, I want her to feel nervous. <laughs> because she is. So don't come to me with the fake ass smile. That's like I told you, that's what they do with animals. Try to smile. Hey, hey, buddy. Hey. Try to calm the animal down. Shit, they, you know, the stereotypes are we're the ones who's violent, but God damn it, they're the ones who's violent. You know, it's funny how everything that they do, they put on us. And act like we're the ones uh, who do that kind of stuff. That's what they do. I mean, all these damn shows I watch about these night stalkers and these creeps. They're worried about black people. Man, matter of fact, I'm telling you this, white people, you're lucky if you get robbed and only robbed by somebody black. But when you confront, you're confronted by somebody white, goddamn, you got to be worried about more than getting robbed. Shit, they're going to R you and throw you in the dumpster and shit, cut you up or bring you home and torture you and shit. That's what they do. And speaking of that, you notice how... Because most black people have been saying, so this is how you know they watch people. Black people say, oh, we don't do that kind of stuff. Kidnapping kids and serial killing and all that kind of stuff. You notice how over the past, what, couple of years, they've been showing a whole lot and talking a whole lot about black serial killers. I'm like, man, damn, where were these motherfuckers before? Now, all of a sudden, they're showing so much stuff about them. You can't help, hope but, help but to miss it, but to watch it, rather. I'm like, man, come on. And we don't even, again, we don't even know how many of these serial killers are black Americans, but they don't care because it's propaganda. And again, I blame the small hats because the small hats run the media. They own it. So they're the ones who have to own it. And before I let you go, I was also mentioning small hats because I was on some video and they show Donald Driver playing in some movie. And I made a comment that because he's a small hat and he's British, he gets to play in so many different roles that try to break him away from the typecast, tap, typecasting of the, the bullshit Disney Star Wars movies. I said other people like Mark Hamill, you know, it was hard for him to break away from Luke Skywalker. And they say, you're anti-Semite. I said, you know, I went down my whole thing about how they're not Semites and all that kind of shit. And they called me a Nazi. You know, when people start calling you a Nazi, you already know they're on the take. And I said, you mean Nazi as in 
you know, the, the, the so-called definition of Nazism, where the acronym doesn't seem to match up, whether it's in English or German. <laughs> then I said, you mean Nazi as in Ashkenazi? Coincidence? And then I said, you notice how Harrison Ford played Han Solo. In case people don't know, Harrison Ford is a small hat. <laughs> I know it's shocking to a lot of people, man. It's shocking. Uh, it, again, the disguises with the names. Because most people, when they hear the name Ford, they're not thinking small, small hat. Uh, but that's why they do that. But he would have been typecast as Han Solo. But instead, you got the Indiana Jones, the Blade Runner, and uh, then after that, every damn thing up until today. What's that other shit, that flight, uh, whatever the fuck that name was? With the airplane? I forgot the name of that movie. Hunt for Red October, a whole bunch of shit. Diverse roles to get his face or for the audience or the, for the public to see his face, even though you, because for the longest time, I always said, damn, that's Han Solo. But you see his face in different things. Then you're like, okay, that's the actor Harrison Ford. And the Indiana Jones, I think that was probably the biggest thing to break him away from the Han Solo typecasting. And Blade Runner helped that, but, you know, that was sci-fi too. So if he didn't have the Indiana Jones, the Blade Runner probably would have helped the typecast him. But the point is, he's a small hat. I'm not saying he's a bad actor. He's a good actor. But I'm just saying, he's a small hat. So he gets the opportunity to break away. Whereas other groups, you get typecast. That's it. You don't get opportunity. They say you only we only see you as rerun or you know whoever, whatever the fuck the role is. Unfortunately, that's how it works. So I always like doing debates with small hats because and they hate doing it with me. See, I don't get emotional, as you know. You can't get emotional when you have a discussion or a debate with people. Especially when you know their tactics. Some people are waiting for what they call disrespect. They don't define what that is, but it's usually when you ask the wrong questions that they don't want to answer. Now you're being disrespectful. So what you don't want to do is start calling them names because then that's their excuse to say, oh, you're disrespectful. Don't do that. The goal is to get as much information out of the people as possible. You don't, and, and we had the discussion even, you know, on Saturday. We had people here and questions were being asked, but before they can answer, follow up questions were being asked or other questions were being asked. The most important thing to do is to let the people speak for themselves. Take notes, either write it down or take mental notes. And if something doesn't sound right, go back on it and challenge them. When you catch them, go back on it and challenge them. That's what you do. I obviously over my channel, you know, it, it could work. You can, you know, keep going back and forth because there's no such thing as disrespect over here because I'm not going to play that petty stuff, but other channels like the Chief X, Sidenetters and all these people, my forever, who seems to be beefing with everybody again. And his views are back down low again because when he doesn't have the names on his channel, yeah, I'm, I'm calling you out, my forever. When you don't have the names on your channel, the views go down again to nothing. Your channel's not popping. <laughs> so... You got to let people speak. That's why the chief X, that's why their strategy is to not let people speak. So you can't get the truth out. And that's, I mean, I, I can't tell every strategy because I know other people are listening, but 
the biggest strategy is to let people sink themselves. And the biggest advantage anybody can have over somebody else is to have a wide range of knowledge. So when people try to pull the flim flam over on you, you already know that they're bullshitting. But it is what it is on that. That's why I the, the small hats, I, I, like I said, I have debated some. And they're crafty. The average black person can't debate them. And I don't care about those small hats that side that and them supposedly debated. Those are their bosses. You come before me, God damn it. I'll expose you as the liars that you are. And that's not just for the small hats, that's for anybody. So with that, I'm out.